Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we are continuing on with our Decision Tree Database. This is part four, Editor Navigation. We are going to build ways to get around inside the database by moving from record to record. We're going to start by building up the main menu. So we've got the list of the root nodes here, right? The start of each decision tree. And from there, we're going to open up the editor form where we can click on the children to launch that record, go back up to the parent and so on. Of course, this is part four of a multi-part series. If you haven't watched parts one, two, and three yet, go watch those first. Don't try to jump in the middle. Just, just, just don't. Just go watch the first, second, and third parts, and then come on back. And now everything we've done so far in parts one through three, we haven't needed any VBA whatsoever. And I told you way back in part one, we're going to be using some VBA. So that starts today. So if you still have not yet watched my intro to VBA video, go watch this. It's free. It's on my YouTube channel. It'll teach you everything you need to know in about 20 minutes. So go on, go watch it, and then come on back. All right, we're back at it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is let's take this main menu here and let's make this not the main menu for the Tech Help database anymore. But let's, uh, let's see, we can get rid of this stuff here. And I'm going to change this so it says decision tree. Now, remember my trick. Don't change it in here because if you change it here, if you put decision tree here, watch what happens. All right, and that changes the labels, you know, the size and height. You got No, just undo that, Control-Z. What you're going to do is you're going to open up the properties and you're going to change it over here in the caption property, right there. Decision tree. And then your label doesn't reform. It just keeps its same dimensions, right? And I didn't do this in my screenshots, but let's come in here and we'll call this decision tree version 0 0.04, let's call it. Since we're on the fourth lesson and we're not at version 1.0 yet. And I probably will forget to update this in future videos, so no one yell at me. <laughs> when we're all done with it, I'll, I'll make it version one, hopefully. All right. And since we're doing this kind of stuff, let's change the title of here of the application. So I'm going to save that form. We're going to go to file options and then current database and right here we're going to call this decision tree by access learning zone how's that sound all right there we go all right i'm also going to change my colors just a wee bit so it looks different from the other guys let's go with um dark blue here and let's go with like a lighter blue in here i'm all about color there we go that looks pretty good Okay, so next I want a list box over here that's going to show a list of the parent nodes, the top nodes of the decision trees. Now, you can have as many as you want, but the defaults here are all zeros. Now, I'm going to make it so it's going to be either zero or null. You can be a parent ID because later on when you're editing these things, right, if you want to get rid of something's parent, Okay, we could make a button over here to set it to zero, but you can't easily set this combo box to zero, but if you just blank that out, it turns it into null. So it's an easy way, and, I, and I'm assuming some people might do that, but that's okay. We can have two conditions for it being a parent node, right? All right, so let's create our list box here. So form design, where's my list boxes? You're right there, that's a list box. I don't use them as much as combo boxes, but they have their purpose. List boxes are great when you wanna have a list of options that are right in someone's face. They don't have to open up a combo box. All right, get the values from a table or query. Question T, that's fine. All right, I'm going to bring in the question ID and the description. Again, we don't need the parent ID for this. Next. Well, we are going to use the parent ID, but we don't need it in the list box. You'll see in just a minute. All right, what do we want to sort these by? Description's fine. If you want a custom sort order, then just make yourself a custom sort order field and sort by that. Okay, that's also a possibility. All right, next. This is what it's going to look like. Now, don't panic. Yep, all the items are in there. That's okay. Make that about yay wide. Next, what label do you want? Doesn't matter. We're going to nuke it anyways. All right, and it's right there. I know it's hard to see. Delete. Make this a wee bit bigger, maybe like so. Let's match the size of that guy down there. Right like that. Okay. And we'll give it a touch of color as well. Maybe like a blue. I don't like to use the theme colors, by the way. I like to use these guys. There we go. That's better. All right. Give it a name. There's one thing I don't like about the, the, the wizards, the combo box wizard, the list box wizard, and this is a note for the access team. Um, is it, it calls it list 16. You should ask, what do you want to name this thing? All right, let's call this the question list. 
Right, that could easily be a step in the wizard, guys. I just I was watching an interview with the new program manager for Access. I didn't know that the Access team, the people at Microsoft that actually develop and work on and build Access, there's only six people. I was wow, I figured it'd be at least like 20, 30 people. But like I've always said, Access is literally the redheaded stepchild of the Microsoft Office family. <laughs> I got nothing but love for it. I've built my whole career on it, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> six people. Wow. All right. Anyway, so let's save this, close it. Let's open it back up. I got a button on my toolbar up here that opens it up. And there we go. Okay. Now, there's all the nodes, all the questions. We want to limit this to just the guys that are zero parent nodes, right? So let's go and edit your SQL. Remember I told you that in the first lesson, too, we're going to use a little SQL in this. Well, if you go over here to the data tab, click on this, right, and then go to data. Here's the row source right there. I'm going to zoom in. Zoom, I said zoom. I'm going to zoom in, shift F2. That's the zoom box. Now, this is the SQL statement that generates the list of records in that box. Now, since I'm only using one table, I don't need question T dot everywhere. So it makes it a little more readable. So let's just get rid of the question T and the extra brackets we don't need. We'll make this a little easier to read. Okay, that's another thing the access team you guys could do is if it's, a, if it's based on a single table, you don't need all that question T dot everywhere. Makes it harder to read for the noobs. Okay, so here's the list. It's giving me basically the question ID and the description from the question T, order by description. That's our sort. Well, we're going to add a where condition here. Now we need to say where the parent ID is either null or zero. Okay, so right in here, we're going to say where parent ID equals zero or is null parent ID, just like that. Okay, either of those conditions can be true. Do we need parentheses around it? Yeah, you could, it won't hurt anything, but you don't really need it here. Okay, hit okay. Save it, close it, open it, boom, there you go. There's your nodes that have a zero or a null value as their parent ID, so they're the top of their respective decision trees. It's one of the, the many reasons why learning SQL is very important. This stuff here, it's all over access. And the more you learn about this and VB, of course, but SQL is the foundational language of databases. Learn this stuff, folks. I'll talk about a seminar I have at the end of the video about my SQL seminar. It's a three-part series. All right, now we're going to make a button for the editor, the admin, whatever you want to call yourself, to open up whatever value the user selects in that box. All right, I'm going to hijack the Hello World button because we don't really need it for anything else. We'll move it up here, and I'll put in here editor. Okay? And we'll call this now the editor button. Okay, right click, build event. Let's go into the code builder. This is our first look at some VBA. Now there's a lot of stuff in here from the tech help template that we don't need. I'm gonna keep my status function in here. All right, uh, we don't need the customer contact button, the customer forum button. There's our new editor button stuff. All right. And we don't need, um, yeah, leave the form. Well, do startup is just some code that I have for me. It's in this Rick's mod keep out. It just moves the database on my screen where I want it. You can use it if you want to, but it's programmed for my machine. I talk about it in another video. Uh, we can get rid of this. Okay, so right here, here we are in the editor button click. Now, what do we want to do? Well, first, we want to make sure the user picked something. Okay, if not, we're just going to exit out. So if is null, the question list then you could put a warning in here, pick a pick something first, whatever, whatever, yada, yada. I'm just going to exit stuff. Don't do anything if they didn't pick it, if they didn't pick one of those decision trees. OK. Now, if they did pick a question value from the question list, I want to open up the question editor form to that specific record. So we're going to say do command open form. What form question editor F and then it's going to be comma, 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 comma. comma. No, the where condition, you can use the filter or the where condition. I prefer the where condition. Uh, it's going to be question ID on that form equals the question list value. So if they pick the one, it's going to open up record one. And that's it. That's all you need. Save it. Always good to throw in a debug compile from time to time. Come back out. Meow. Close it. Open it. Hit the button. Nothing happens. You can throw a beep in there or a message box or whatever you want to do. I don't care. Pick dungeon crawl and hit editor. Boop, that takes you right to the dungeon crawl. See that? Isn't that neat? Close it. Pick the PC troubleshooting. Boop, it takes you right to the PC troubleshooting. See that? Isn't that nice? That's, that's cute. That's how you open it up. Okay. 
Now we're gonna do the same thing in here to navigate up and down the decision tree. Okay, let's start with the children. If I double click on one of these, I want it to go to that child record, which essentially is just gonna reopen this form centered on that node. So we're question ID equals that guy. Okay, so right click design view. All right, click in here. Now that selects the sub form, click on it a second time. And now you've got the description in here, select it. Okay, bring up its properties, go to events, and then you want the on double click event. Dot, dot, dot. All right, now we are in the description, double click event of the child editor form. Okay, so in here, we're gonna say do command dot open form. What's the parent form? Question editor F comma, 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 question ID equals the question ID of the record I'm on right now in the sub form. Okay, that question ID here is the value of the question ID of the child form. So we're gonna open up the parent form centered on that record. Save it. Okay, now I like to throw a splash of color. I like to use blue that visually indicate, indicates, what's an indicate? It indicates visually to the user that they can do something on that. You can put a button there or whatever. I like double click events. So I'm gonna format that and then just pick a blue. Let's go with, uh, how about that blue? That's good, right? Okay, save it, close it, open it back up again, editor. All right, let's go to the no, the PC does not turn on, double click, boom. Look at that, I'm on the no, the PC does not turn on. See, yes, it's plugged in, double click, boom. And we're gonna make this process a little more streamlined for the end user. This is the best way to do it for you, the admin, the creator of the decision tree. We're gonna make a nice pretty one for the end user, right? For Joe in accounting who doesn't know how to use a computer. Okay, now let's do the same thing, but to go back up, we'll double click on the parent to go back up a level. All right, right click, design view here. Let's put that color on it while we still got it. There we go. Okay, and let's double click on you. Go to event. Oh, it's combo eight. I always look for that. All right, we didn't give this. See, that's again, the wizard should do that. Let's go over here and let's slide up to the top and let's call this guy. What do you want to name it? Let's call it parent combo. You could call it parent ID, but I like to call it parent combo because later on, if I'm, if I'm programming on it, I know it's a combo box and not just an ID text box. Okay, events on double click, dot, dot, dot. Here we go right here. Now, this is a case where I do wanna check to make sure the parent isn't null again. Okay, so if parent combo is not zero and not is null parent combo, that covers both cases, right? Then do command, open form, same stuff. Question, editor, F, and yes, a, yes, a form can reopen itself. Comma, 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 question ID equals parent combo. So open up the form where the question ID equals whatever the parent is. Save it, throw in a debug compile for good measure. We can close this now, we're done with it. Close it, close it, open it. There we go. Let's go to the no, the PC does not turn on. No, it's not plugged in. Okay, let's go back up to the no, the PC does not turn on. Back up. Yeah. It, 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 and when you double click, it will highlight a word sometimes. See, that's just like double click. Okay, let's do it again. Click, double click, double click. See, there's tricks you can do to get around that. If you guys want to see it, I'll show you in a future video. All right. But now we know how to move up and down throughout the decision tree. There's the top. Go to yes, the PC turns on. Yes, Windows boots. Yes, basic, basic application start. Double click there. And now you can add more stuff very easily. All right, go back up to yes, Windows boots. Yes, application start, nope, nothing runs. Uh, can't tell, my mom won't let me use the computer, whatever, All right? And now I can flesh that out. All right, same thing with our dungeon crawl. Here's our dungeon crawl, go to the editor. All right, um, I think in the other one I added Paladin, did I add Paladin? That was in my, my template one that I had before. All right, now I wanna borrow some stuff from, let's say, Cleric. So go to Cleric. I was borrowing stuff before, copy. Go back up to Dungeon Crawl. Click on Paladin, double click. I can paste that here now, right? 
greeting, let's say, uh, you know, uh, warrior of the cloth or whatever you want to call them, right? You gather your holy symbol and what does a paladin use? Oh, and, and spear, I don't know, whatever, and head to the dungeon, okay? And so on. Then you can copy the, the other items and stuff. And sure, you can make a button here that copies the children from another node. There's all kinds of stuff you could do, folks. That's why you learn how to do this stuff yourself, right? That's why you learn VB. That's why you learn SQL. That's why you learn how to build this stuff, because you can put the Legos together any way you want. And I know this is a silly, you know, gaming example, but it's the same thing for your business, too. If you've got custom procedures in your business that you have to, you know, that you've been following for years, don't try to find other software that fits your business. Build the software to fit your business, right? You got a successful business. Your procedures work. Don't try to shoehorn into, you know, QuickBooks or some other off-the-shelf accounting software when you've got a certain way of doing things. Make your database do what you want it to do. That's why you learn this stuff. That was most of what I did when I was a consultant for about 20 years. As I went into companies, I learned how they did business, whether it was on paper. Yeah, I had some of those whether it was on a, you know, Excel spreadsheets, whatever, show me your procedures. I'll build your database around the way you're used to doing business. That's the power of an access consultant. And that's why access is a great tool for rapid development, especially for small businesses. And then when you outgrow it as a backend, you upgrade to SQL Server and you, you can still keep using your access database. I could talk about this stuff for hours. <laughs> All right, back to my prototype, which is starting to look very much like the one we're building, right? Back to the prototype we have in here. Now, double-clicking on this will bring up the user form. This is a lot more pretty, right, than just the, the editors for us, right? The user form, this is what we're going to build next. This is going to be designed for the user, so they see the question here, and then they can just double-click on the answers down here, and it makes a lot more sense, right, than the editor version. So, yes, PC turns on, double-click. Okay, yes, PC turns on, that's good. Does Windows boot? No, Windows does not boot, see? This is a little more pretty. We're going to build this in the next video. Complete with a back button here. So you can go back, right? Go back. And I'll take you back up to the top. Or close it if you're at the parent node. All right. Now, I mentioned before the importance of learning SQL. Learn SQL, people. If you're going to be doing anything semi-serious with access, you want to learn SQL. I got a three-part series. It's separate from my regular courses. Because in my regular courses, I, I do teach you enough to, to be functional and to get around. But if you really want to learn SQL, uh, part one covers all the basics of select statements, where conditions, order by clauses, that kind of stuff. Part two gets into action queries, modifying the data, right? Insert queries, update queries, delete queries, that kind of stuff. And then part three is all about, it's more advanced stuff. It's all about manipulating the structure of tables. You can add fields, you can add indexes, you can drop tables, all kinds of stuff. And that's my SQL seminar series. You could take one, two, or all three parts if you want to. You'll find information on my website. There's the link down there. Don't forget about my developer courses if you want to learn more about programming and VBA. And that is going to be your tech help video for today. I want you to post down below what features would you like to see added to this decision tree. All right? The more feedback I get, the more features I'll add. And you know what, what people want to see, squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? I hope you learned something today, folks. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. 
you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.